The NBA playoffs continue to roll on. And as we, the Chicago Bulls fans, we look around the landscape and say, damn, he was an ex-Chicago Bull. He was an ex-Chicago Bull. He was an ex-Chicago Bull. The ex-Chicago Bulls players are thriving in these NBA playoffs, and it's something to be said about the Bulls player development. You know me and C-Dub going to talk about it, break it down, have a little fun, turn up. Maybe say, oh, v ho, you never know, <laughs> but you know, you got to hear the music first. Tone, yeah. Gang. Yeah. 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 Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby. And I am with my dog, C Dub. How you doing, Bob? Hey, man, I'm doing fine. Hey, man, Jalen Brunson name is Shorty with the Folly from now on. Oh, bro. <laughs> but hey, if you're tuned in with us today, make sure you're hitting that like button. You subscribe to the channel when you hit that notification bell. We coming with the offseason content, the Chicago Bulls lottery. Is uh they will be a part of the lottery that's happening and going down on Sunday. And after that, more college prospects will be done and the content will be pushed out on to see who best fit the Chicago Bulls. There's a lot of young players to talk about, but nonetheless, we jump into today's topic. C-Dub, we're looking around the NBA playoffs, and man, I keep saying, damn, he's a former Chicago Bull. Look at him hit that three. Damn, he's a Chicago boy. Look at him dunk on somebody here. Damn, he's an ex-Chicago boy. Look at him light it up from the three. Damn, he's an ex-Chicago boy. Look at what he can do. What happened? So, C-Dub, just to name some of those players. Hell, I got to even name a coach. Mm. Got to name a coach. Talk to me. That's Tom Thibodeau, ex-Chicago mm -hmm. boy, who has now made the playoffs and has won damn near quadruple. Ken Ken Drupal six times more than what the Chicago Bulls have won since he left. That's Tom Thibodeau. Then we talk about some of the other players. That's some players that's around the league still in the playoffs and having a decent impact for their team. That's Doug McDermott. Not so much for the Pacers, though. I keep it a being with you. But Max Struess with the Cavs, Luke Cornett getting some tick with Boston. Daniel Gafford and DJJ, who was just with the Chicago Bulls last season. What do you have to say about these ex-Chicago Bulls players and the one coach thriving since they left the Chicago Bulls? You know what they do to parents that neglect their kids and uh, don't teach them how to survive in the world? They put them in jail. <laughs> so the Chicago Bulls organization, just for the fact of Derrick Jones Jr., should be put in prison. This guy looked like a <laughs> totally different player. I know he playing with Luka. I know he playing with Kyrie Irving. But he has limited time with the ball. When he gets the ball, he's shooting from three. Did you see those off those tip dunks yesterday? I mean, the other, was it yesterday? This dude, we knew he was a high flyer. He looked like a totally different player with all the tools that he had when he was playing here. And guess what? We could have kept. No, I think he wanted to get out of it. Didn't he, nephew, if I'm mistaken, I don't even think he that actually man, verbally man. committed to come oh back God. into Chicago and then said, nah, I'm out. And then no, went to Dallas. Exactly. I, think it, I think it went like yes. that. Sounds about right. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him. But it is some total neglect from the Bulls front office organization. Even look at Thibodeau. The guy was one was the best coach since you had Phil Jackson in the building, and he was successful. He was successful, even without Derrick Rose. Even Jimmy Butler and Rondo took Boston to the limit. Probably would have won if Boston didn't fuck up his thumb. That's a for sure. This guy is a tremendous coach. I would say top five coach in the league. What do you say to that, nephew? It's an argument, for sure. It's a, you can argue. You can argue, Thibodeau, top five coach in the league. He got his faults. He'll run you into the dirt, for sure. We know that. But it's all about winning for Thibodeau. It's all about winning. And his players 
respect him. Then look, look at Luke Cornett, nephew. He coming off the bench, and he is a solid defender, seven foot two. Finishing, taking tips off the back. He looked like a totally different player than when he played with Chicago. What is that to say about our development program in Chicago? Now, I know we made some uh, some changes to play. We hired a guy before the season started. And you got to look at the results. You see Ayo, you see Kobe, uh, Patrick Williams to an extent. It's starting to get better. But we behind, bro. We behind the eight ball, bro. Nephew, we behind the eight ball, bro. When you, Whenever I look at Derrick Jones Jr. do his thing on the court, I'm like, eh, why couldn't we have that here, bro? Why? But we want a catfish. Don't make no damn sense, bro. It don't make no sense. Because if you're looking at the landscape as those players and that coach that was already mentioned, you think about some of the guys that has been pretty damn solid since they walked themselves up out of the Chicago Bulls organization voluntarily or involuntarily. Yes. I ain't going to say too much about Doug McDermott. Let's keep it a bing. But we talk about Tom Thibodeau and what he has brought to the New York Knicks. Nothing but culture and winning with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Nothing but culture. culture. A little shaky. It was a little shaky. Yeah, a little but shaky. he still ended up in the playoffs, though. Yeah. Then you got Matt Struess, who yeah. made himself out to be one of the three-point specialists who can give you buckets and eventually catch fire and light you up. Luke Cornett. What? 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 Come on. I need a binoculars to make sure it was him. We for real? Then Daniel Gafford, his athleticism as a defensive oh big is just crazy. Me, personally, when he was with the Chicago Bulls, I seen the potential. I didn't yep, know what he was going to be, but you could definitely see the energy and the defensive ability that he possessed within himself. And at one point, this guy was on track to break a record from Kareem, I believe, with most consecutive uh, field goals made without a miss. He was very, very close. So it's crazy to even bring that up. And then DJJ, this guy you had on the team just last year, C-Dub, you asked, what's the problem? The problem was Billy trying to play him at the four. <laughs> Billy trying to run his players down by playing him in the four. Playing him at the four. Guys that don't even post to be there. How many times we looked at Javante Green and said, damn, Javante Green, you guard Giannis? Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. You like six, four? <laughs> damn, Alex minute, Caruso? You, Alex Caruso, you guard him, B. <laughs> right, what we doing? So... When you talk about it from that aspect, you got to look at it like, hey, I just don't think that these players was placed in the best position. No. Then when you talk about player development, it's still a little bit un it's still a little bit questionable on what the hell the Chicago Bulls was doing. They started to try to fix that issue by going out to get Peter Patton and then now getting rid of some of those guys that was longtime uh, assistant coaches and stuff up out of the building. I'm happy they did that. So hopefully that can be a step in the right direction. But as of right now, it has been a failure, failure to say the least, on how many Chicago Bulls players have came through, had an opportunity, and got out. I would even bring up one some guys that's that's not that's no longer in the playoffs. What about what happened to Spencer Dinwiddie? He was right there in the building. I thought he played well during summer league. That's just my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. So what what were we seeing? It's the biggest question of it all. Um, yeah. Front office, you got some figuring out to do and understand and try to at least look around. Like I said on the, the daily that I did not too long ago, these guys got to figure this thing out. You got to figure it out. Uh, um, Kind of change course a little bit. You have to. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you said that, change course. Maybe you shouldn't change course, nephew. Maybe we shouldn't have change course nephew let me give you let me give you this right here let me say this let me see if you agree with this hindsight's 2020 i'm gonna jump off the ledge right now this ledge ain't even a tall ledge this ain't a plateau this is a curve nephew if we had daniel gafford running center for the chicago bulls this season we've been a playoff six seed at least Damn, six seed at know? least six seed at least playing center with his defensive footwork and what he can do, six seed. Who the backup? You still rocking with Drummond as a backup? Yes. 
Yeah. I think it's a good argument to make. Okay. Okay. It's a bit, it's a bit challenging. It's a bit challenging uh, because I still think that the construction of the team was a bit iffy. You know what I'm saying? But, when you had wait. to depend on players like a Tory Craig and a Javon Carter. Tory Craig was better than Javon Carter. Let's keep it a book. But at the same time, these low budget free agent signings, they if if after we look at, like you said, hindsight is 2020, they really didn't make a difference. They yeah. didn't make a difference. Yeah. The Bulls were in the same spot that they were the previous year. Yeah. So it's but, definitely debatable though, because I think that you I think that you have an addition of a Daniel Gaffer, you raise that horrible defensive rating, which had you ranked at 22nd in the league. After you oh. was ranked top five, remember we hung our hats on that. Yeah, the year bro. before, and we had the Bulls didn't the hang their hats on that this season. No way, they had spurts, nephew. They had rare spurts where we like, damn, look at the Bulls, look at this. But guess who wasn't in the game? Vooch. And I don't want to feel like I'm just picking on Vooch, but it is what it is. And I don't want to make this a show about we got to replace them and nothing like that because we got some shows coming up for that particular reason. But with a Daniel Gafford starting young guy, athletic big, erasing shit in, in the paint, we'll be better team. Just to think, the Bulls, they could have had at least 10 more wins with five, six, five or six better defended possessions in each of those lo- in 10 losses of the season so pretty much some of those close game losses yes could have converted the chicago bulls to go at least over 40 wins yes absolutely absolutely bro. i could I, I i honestly think that a lot of things could have been swung differently for the chicago bulls but it was all up on them in addition to billy donovan hence why we bring up tom thibodeau mm-hmm. his team their grittiness their toughness, their willingness to continue to fight gives them wins to where you like, bro, y'all was just down 10 points with yep. three minutes left, and you won the fucking game by yep. five. <laughs> <laughs> Not by one, by five. <laughs> look, bro, look, nephew, before you finish, there's some players on this roster that ain't playing for Tom Thibodeau. He ain't going to play them. And – is Vooch gonna play? It, you think he gonna let Vooch play? I mean, if you, I mean, if you remember, you Mitchell, know Thibodeau, Mitchell Robinson was the starter. Yeah, the starter anymore for a reason, right? Not because he just not because he keep getting injured, but for a reason. Yeah, bro, come on now. I think if Thibodeau was the coach last season, Andre Drummond starts now without even a doubt within the season. I don't care what the contract says. Thibodeau ain't going for no def- no defense like that, bro. Yeah, that was terrible. You think Catfish plays? He I not mean, playing in the playoffs. This Come man, on. Tom Thibodeau, playing guys right now in the second round, 45, 48 minutes. Josh Hart is playing whole games right now. Bro, who will play? Ayo going to play. Kobe going to play. play. I don't know about Zach. <laughs> Zach plays. <laughs> Zach, Zach plays. Play? The best pair. Yes, he's going to play. <laughs> You think DeMar he'll play? play? Yes, DeMar will play. Patrick Williams, ooh, I don't know. You don't know about Pat, but he played defense. I'm going to keep it a buck, though, but I don't know. You don't think Pat will play, but Pat plays defense and Zach don't play defense Zach that well. Zach is your best offensive we- Well, Do you think he Zach cares? Offensive weapon. Do you think he care? Yes. He you does. think Thibodeau cares? Yes, because okay. you still need offensive scoring. As you seen him the other night when he talked about Hey, these these are the guys that I got. They're the offense and the defense. I don't have many options, so this is going to play, and I'm going to challenge them to play as many minutes as I give them. That's just what it's going to come down to be. That's a good comment. Uh, I want to hear that in the comments. What do y'all think with Thibodeau as the coach? It's just, just crazy. Would Zach Levine be able to play under Tom Thibodeau? Let me know in the, Let us He's know in playing. the comments. He played under him as a young buck. <laughs> did he play all? Did he play a lot? He got traded. What the hell are you talking about? You would have traded Zach, a young Zach Levine, for Jimmy Butler too. Do you hear what you're saying? A young Zach Levine with all those gifts that he had, 
He traded him away. He was already scoring. He was already double digits, over 15 points per game, meaning he was going to get better. He traded the future for Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler is a fucking star that you know a... that you know can give you multiple things throughout the season and definitely up his game in the playoffs to help you win a series. Zach Levine was a question mark at that point, bro. He was not a question mark. Zach Levine we knew he had, had a game, but bigger you know bag than Jimmy. A Twenty-five. Just because you, just because we believe the bag is bigger, doesn't mean that he's the better player. He was not the better better player at that moment. No. Yes, but you Jimmy bet Butler on the was. future. No. I, I'm talking about Zach wasn't the better player at that moment of the okay. trade. We agree but with that. the future was brighter. You know what I'm saying? Not the in the eyes of Tom Thibodeau. What can you give me? It's not a for sure thing that if you score and go over 15 points a game that you're going to turn into a 25-point score. It's not a guarantee. But What's a guarantee had... is bringing in Jimmy Butler, who I know has the playoff experience, has the culture that I want, who is who can help promote the culture that I want to promote, and who's going to be a defensive guy that I can depend on when it's time to go to war. It's too many questions surrounding Zach Levine at that particular moment to not say, Jimmy Butler, come on, I want to go to the playoffs. I just think Thibodeau did that because familiar, familiarly, I can't of even course. say that damn well. And also with what you said, he is that type of guy at that point. But you could have bet it on the future and knew that Zach was going to get better. Everybody knew that Zach was going to get better. Everybody knew. He went to 20. What do you, I mean, he averaged in, in Chicago. His best was like 29 points per game. It was Jimmy like, ain't never was came it. close. 26, something like Jimmy ain't never came close to that. Stop it. Better player though. It's felt differently. You know that. Jimmy, Jimmy, the over. You know what I'm saying? I think Zach, I think Thibodeau would have been great for Zach Levine. That's all I'm saying. He, he, he would great. have. I would agree with that. I think he would have been a better coach for Zach Levine than Billy Donovan because I think Billy Donovan is too laxed. Yep. When it comes down to certain things, you got to be hard on some of these players. And I think yep. that right now, with the way that things are shifting and have shifted so far, you ain't going to find too many Ant Edwards in here. No, 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 no. Guys that come out and say, screw that. We got to punch. When they punch, we punch him back. You ain't going to find too many cultural builders like a Villanova Jalen Brunson. You ain't mm -hmm. going to find too many of that. You're going to find a lot of James Hardens around this bitch, a lot of Paul Georges around this bitch that do a lot of talking but don't back it up. That's what you're going to find, a lot of those. Mm -hmm. It's very, very rare that you find – Guys with the, the the mentality that can take teams to different heights. Yeah, bro. This Knicks, bro, the Knicks team, they play like six or seven people, bro. All heart. And it's all heart. And a lot of Jalen Edwards Brunson. is 22, bro. 22, bro. And That's he an talking anonymous. like the next coming of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, bro. Damar looked 22 on the podium, nephew. He looked like he oh, just got he out of high school. He looked like he'd been in this league 10 years. Yes, bro. Yes. That kid is a danger <laughs> to the NBA, to everybody's that hopes man, and dreams. And sat in front of the mic and said, yeah, my coach said that they're going to give us our best punch. I said, okay, coach, we're going to start punching back. What? <laughs> what? You don't hear that? <laughs> I love this kid. You don't hear bro. that in that. You don't hear that in today's NBA like you that. Just not like bro. that. You not don't. like that. Now, That's do you uh, do you think you do you give Minnesota the credit for that for his growth, or you just give it to him? He was born like that. I'm do giving you it give to him both of them. You give him both. Giving it to okay. both of them. You got to consider him putting in the work, putting in the, the work ethic. He always had the charisma and stuff. You asked him any question when he came to sports. He said, I could play any sport. And I'm going to be good at it, too. He always had that confidence about himself. But I got to look at it. And I got to hold myself accountable. Last year, when they traded for Rudy Gobert, I said they was going to be a first-round exit. They were. So I was not wrong. But I, the year two, oh, could, potentially knocking out the pick that I had for the Denver Nuggets going back-to-back. It's them. getting real shaky, I tell you that. It's it looking real shaky, bro. <laughs> if they don't win, this next game is wrapped. <laughs> I'm telling you. So Ooh. that's, bro, it's just different because the, the organization put together a team that's just, 
is 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 built the right way. It's, it's built the like right way. Old school, old win. school team, nephew. They go start with the bigs. They got three seven footers that can play. Bro. Bro, now I'm gonna ask you. A not a lot of teams have that, and I know you' about to go to a Bulls question. Let's yeah, go. I am. Is the success of the Minnesota Timberwolves with that improved Zach Eady's, uh draft status? Would that improve? Do you want? Because this is how you defeat Joker. Could Joker having all type of problems right now. He having Could all type. Me. Yeah. Just saying. Oh, no, I I, I watched it. Uh, I I've been diving into a young guy now, uh, Evis Missy from Baylor. Oh my mm -hmm. God, he way yeah. more athletic than an Edie. Okay, way more inside press than a Filipowski. At least early on, looking at the tape. But man, mm -hmm. that team just built different. They got they got veteran leadership and Mike Conley. You got a guy that's been there around a long time and Rudy Gobert. Another Sorry. guy that's been around some time with Four uh. Times. Uh, Car Anthony Towns, then you got young wings, they hungry. Oh, Alexander and McDaniels. Oh, my oh, god, I lockdown ain't, straight. Jacket. I haven't seen defense like that in a long time. decades, <laughs> decades, long bro. Time. Bro, them they locked up Murray so hard. Demar threw a towel and he now, wrapped and a towel <laughs> and threw it at threw it at the ref. Stick to basketball, my guy. Oh, <laughs> Dodgeball or baseball ain't for you. For anyway, real. Anyway. But man. Man, man, man. Hey, yeah. we, we veered off, but we back on, man. Hell yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh yeah. you got anything left regarding this? Uh matter of fact, how does it make you feel seeing these ex bulls thrive? <laughs> it kind of irritates it, it irritates me, nephew. It irritates me that even you could look like ex Samanovich. He didn't really get a – I don't think he got a fair shot. Nope. You know what I'm saying? It's like they just ignore player development and young players. You know what I'm saying? They saying it's like if you ain't good right away, we ain't got the time to develop you to be a part of this team in the future. Like that's uh, – I might be going, going a little too far, but this seems that way, bro. Like we need to show some patience with these kids and actually give them a shot to play. Look at Julian Phillips. He almost sat half of the season. Soon as he come in the game, he looked confident as hell. He looked like, damn, what why we wait all the way to now? Dalen been waiting a year and a half, nephew. And he's still smiling and dancing. That shows you what kind of guy he is. They send him the G League, he tear the G League up, gang. He tear him up. He don't belong there. Where does he belong? He, he belongs in the NBA. Let him play. What the fuck? Man. Couldn't have said it any better, but that is it from us today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The off-season content will continue to come. Be on the lookout for that Bulls draft lottery. Uh, the NBA draft lottery, see where the Bulls select. Right now, they got a 2% chance to enter the top three or four, whatever it is. But we will let y'all know and update that as that come down. Thank y'all so much. Catch y'all on the next one for sure. Come on, yeah. Gang.